Picture Perfect's fertilization program is doing everything it needs to do to keep your weeds under control and to make your fescue green and thick. But in order for it to actually look awesome, it needs to be mowed correctly. So I'm gonna lay out for you exactly what's involved in making sure that you are mowing the right way. The first thing that people want to talk about when it comes to mowing is how to stripe the grass. That is the hot topic because it looks so good and it's what Picture Perfect has mastered in our little mowing division and what really, really gives us that Picture Perfect signature look in a lot of our properties. But anybody can do it. It's not that hard once you get a grasp for how it works and what's involved but you have to look at mowing as a bigger picture. There's multiple things from the mowing height to its frequency to how sharp your blades are that all work together to make it a really, really good mowing service, even if you're the one doing it yourself. So before we get into how to stripe your lawn, and I know that's, that's why you came here, it's the exciting part, we're saving that for dessert. That's gonna be at the end of this video. However, sit through the next few minutes where I'm gonna break down the other important things because they're worth knowing. Just like our watering video, which you can check out up here, I'm gonna go into some detail, but it makes a huge difference. And if you implement any of these practices into the way that you care for your lawn at home, it's gonna make a difference and it's gonna look better. And again, before we get any further, just stop, pause, just do what you need to do. Just take a breath and subscribe. I don't get it. I don't know why you haven't done so already, but please do so so that I can keep making these videos to make sure that you guys know how to take care of your lawn. All right, so first rule of mowing your grass, mowing at the right height. Mowing height completely depends on the type of grass that you are tending. For the most part, warm season grasses like zoysia and bermuda like to be mowed low. We're talking that golf course kind of cut where it's almost like school carpet. It is so short and this looks really cool, but it's not at all suitable for cool season turf like fescue, which is what we're taking care of in RVA. Turf type tall fescue, which is what we all have, gets its name from its like for staying tall. It tells you right in the name how high it wants to be cut and that's going to be high. We are talking four to four and a half inches, even taller if you've got really healthy rigid cell wall kind of grass. And it makes a huge difference. This is how your fescue shades its roots. And the taller that it is, the deeper its roots are going to be encouraged to go. And that's a win-win situation. It looks better, it stays healthier. You can't go wrong with that. So like I said, say it with me, four to four and a half inches tall is a good rule of thumb. The only time that you're gonna to wanna to bring this lower is right before aeration and seeding. You can take it down to three inches. It's cool enough at that point that it's not gonna be bad for it. And this gives you wiggle room to let it grow out more in the time that you have to take a break from mowing to let that seed germinate. Now here is a little pro tip where mowing height is concerned. The deck of your mower and those notches that let you raise it up and lower it are not necessarily going to coincide with an actual inch measurement. You've got to take a ruler to your mower deck and where the blades are sitting compared to ground level to be sure that you are mowing at the right height. And just because you're on the highest setting doesn't mean that you're mowing high enough. I've seen plenty of residential push mowers where the highest setting is three and a half inches this isn't tall enough for it to really, really be healthy. It's not terrible, but it's not in any way, shape or form ideal and it's gonna stress your lawn out. So just be careful with that, know what you're using, break out the ruler. It's the surest way to make sure that your lawn is gonna be healthy. Now, right there with mowing height in terms of importance is mowing frequency. One of the worst things that you can do for a lawn that is being treated with a fertilizer program is not mow it enough, especially because our fertilizer is making it grow and making it healthy. That's the whole point. 
there's very rarely a situation where you can get away with bi-weekly cutting. The vast majority of picture-perfect lawns need to be cut at least on a weekly schedule. That's why for our small mow division, we don't even offer a bi-weekly option or anything less than weekly because it has to have that consistent cutting or else it's going to get stressed. For the health of the fescue, it's a terrible idea to take off more than one third of the blade of grass at any given time. That means that if you're keeping your grass mowed at four inches tall, Tall. You don't want to cut it once it's gotten past six inches tall because at that point you're going to be taking off more than a third. Here's a math lesson. Two is one third of six. So six minus two equals four and that's where you're keeping that mower. Now I know, trust me, I know life happens and there are going to be situations where the grass just gets out of control either because you went out of town for ten days instead of seven or you got sick or anything like that. It happens. Or even if it's just springtime and it's growing so much that you're having to cut it every three days and I wouldn't be able to do that so I understand and that's where we start to talk about the debate between bagging and mulching I've met so many people especially homeowners that are passionately defensive of bagging their grass clippings when they mow and I'm not here to start a fight. I, I am excited that you care so much about anything to do with your lawn. I just don't really get it. I, I know that the mower came with the bag, but that doesn't mean that you have to use it. In my semi-professional opinion, the only time that it's really appropriate to bag your grass clippings is when you're taking a huge portion of that grass blade off at once. If you're really bringing that lawn down and you're mowing big, big portions of the grass at one time, bagging is the best thing to do because it's the only way that you're going to prevent leaving big chunks of dead grass on the lawn and that is a guaranteed way to smother out and kill off portions of your turf. So enemy number one, leaving chunks and leaving those big piles of clippings behind. Enemy number two, bagging without necessity. Think of it this way. Your grass is super healthy. You are paying for fertilizer to be put down and absorbed by that plant. From root to tip, that grass is full of all of these good nutrients like nitrogen that are so important for healthy turf development. To take away by bagging all of that nutrition that otherwise could be decomposing and breaking back down into your soil system to then be reabsorbed is like highway robbery. It's, it's literally stealing candy from a baby because let's be honest, your lawn is your baby. A pretty well-known statistic that I'm just gonna throw out there because it really drives this point home is that a full season of grass clippings is the equivalent of an application of fertilizer and that's a big deal. We're putting down half a dozen applications of fertilizer each year. Think about how much difference an extra 15-20% of those nutrients each season would make for your lawn. And the counter argument that I hear a lot to that is, well, I get a crazy thick thatch layer if I do that, so it's kind of counterproductive to be smothering out my grass with thatch. But that doesn't happen if you're a picture-perfect client. I mean, I guess it could, but I've never seen it happen because we actually have microbes and other really awesome exciting things that work as basically chemical de-thatchers and they're eating that down and decomposing it at a faster rate so that your thatch layer stays healthy. And that's why it's a picture perfect system. It all works hand in hand. For our mow division, we're mulching our clippings. We are returning that to the soil and we don't see that crazy heavy buildup of thatch. So you shouldn't either. So I think I've made my point, I spoke my arguments, but I want to know what your thoughts are. That's what makes me happy and what I'm interested in. So comment below, let me know, do you mulch or do you bag? It is a hot debate, it's like cats versus dogs. I think the baggers are cat people, but don't tell anyone I said that. And if you haven't already, check out our dog video up here, it's pretty cool. It's pretty clickbaity because everybody loves dogs, but I think it's pretty neat. It's lots of fun information and that's what we're here for. So that kind of settles it in terms of my perspective. Tell me what yours is, but let's move on to the importance of sharp blades. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this in any of your neighbor's properties, because we both know we're not seeing it in yours, right? 
But when you're looking across the lawn, you'll sometimes see this white dusting or haze over the surface of the turf. And this is a telltale sign of dull mower blades. If you're mowing the lawn yourself, ideally your blades should be sharpened at least three times a year, at least. And a good rule of thumb to remember this is Memorial Day, the 4th of July, and Labor Day, or in time for the first cut that you do after your fall seeding has been done. It's a really good habit to just keep two sets of mower blades on hand. So if you don't sharpen them yourself and you take them to be professionally done, if it takes a couple of weeks for you to get them back, you've got your second set ready to go so that there's no downtime. Up close, the best way to tell if you have dull blades or not is to look at the tip of the grass and see if it has Bart Simpson hair. I just have one question about hair. Where does mine start? Head, 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 hair. Where's the border? If you see those jagged teeth across the tip, that's the sign that your grass blades are being torn by the blades of your mower instead of cleanly cut. This ripping effect kills that cellular tissue in that last quarter of an inch of blade, and that's why it turns that light brown and looks that white, dry, dusty across the top. Outside of looking bad, it's bad for your grass. This is unhealthy and it's stressful. So you just, you don't want to make a stressful situation like mowing worse by putting dull blades on your lawn. Don't do it, get them sharp, get it nice. It's not worth doing if you're doing it wrong. All right, so I've hammered you guys on mowing height, mowing frequency, bagging versus mulching, and even sharpening your blades. Now it's time for the fun part. We're ready for dessert. Let's talk about striping. I'm gonna break down for you exactly how to stripe your lawn, and I'm gonna have someone on our team show you exactly what I'm talking about so that anybody can do it. I've learned how to do it. I know that you can do it if I can. Mowing can be pretty straightforward, but there are about six rules of thumb that I want to lay out for you one by one. First, it's a good idea to make one or two perimeter passes to give yourself turning room as you go back and forth on your stripes so that you're not running into your flower beds or any obstacles. Stripes are created based on the bend of the grass, so light stripes are created when you mow away from the viewpoint. In turn, dark stripes are created when the mower is moving toward the viewpoint. This is because the tops of the grass are going to be pointing toward you. To keep your stripes straight, keep your eyes fixed on a specific point where you're planning to end. This will give you guidance. To maximize on the light dark effect, line your tires up against previous passes, but be sure not to leave any gaps or you're going to have a lot of pop-ups. Passing over the same places more and more will eventually wear down the grass, so rotate between maybe three different directions to mix it up and give your lawn a break. So let's see these rules in action. Lisa's making a perimeter pass right now in the backyard of a client who's got some poa, but otherwise the lawn is thick enough that we can see the stripes despite the shade. These perimeter passes will give her room to turn around so that she's not running into things like flower beds or the shed. Once the perimeter pass is complete, Lisa then gives herself a central pass that she's going to use as kind of her guiding line as she goes across the yard creating stripes. As you can see, the pass that she's making away from the viewpoint looks lighter than the rest of the turf. And as she turns around and comes back, that pass toward the viewpoint is going to be creating a dark stripe. Going back and forth, she's creating alternatingly light and dark stripes as she turns and does 180 passes. Here we see Lisa continuing to follow her central guiding line to create the rest of her stripes, but we can also see how closely she's following her original mower passes by keeping the wheels lined up as well as maintaining a point of destination. This keeps her lines straight and tight. Remember, even a push mower can leave ruts or do damage to the lawn unintentionally. So if multiple passes are required to mulch up those clippings, or if you've been mowing in the same direction for a few weeks and need to change to relieve the lawn, changing direction not only creates really cool looking patterns like diamonds, but it also prevents you from creating divots, ruts, or any other damage. And that's the key to creating a picture perfect style like this one here.
I really hope that this has been helpful. I know that it's a lot of information at once, but it's pretty straightforward, common sense, right? So it should be easy to make a part of your lawn care practices at home. If you have any questions about what's been mentioned here, be sure to comment below or hit me up. I love being able to talk with you guys about what's going on in your lawns, especially if you're a Picture Perfect client. It's literally what you're paying me for. So keep me busy. Tell me what's going on. How is your lawn looking right now? The little bit of cold we got at the beginning of the week has really made a difference in a lot of lawns are looking lush so it's a really nice time of year for anything outdoor that you want to be doing remember we're seeing more and more signs of brown patch already developing in lawns so keep an eye out for it check out this video to learn more about our fungicide program and be sure that we do everything we can to keep your lawn successful and picture perfect this summer I appreciate you guys watching we'll talk to you again soon and I hope you have a picture perfect day